Today, we're embarking on a journey of self-discovery, venturing into the practice of mindfulness and how through the practice, you will inevitably run into the realm of spirituality. You may have wondered how can manipulating my attention lead to life-altering improvements? How are mindfulness and spirituality related? Prepare yourself for an enlightening exploration as we demystify these concepts. The Superpower of Mindfulness In this bustling whirlwind of a world full of constant noise and distraction, what if there was a secret superpower that could enhance your quality of life exponentially? A power that you already possess, lying dormant just waiting to be awakened. This incredible ability is none other than mindfulness, a practice that could transform your world. But what exactly is mindfulness? This term gets tossed around quite a bit in modern society, but what does it really entail? Mindfulness, as defined by John Kabat-Zinn, is the awareness that arises through paying attention, on purpose, in the present moment, non-judgmentally. The present moment here is key. We are socialized from a young age to chase what is pleasant and flee from what is unpleasant. For most of us, this form of conditioning unfortunately stays with us throughout our entire lives. People spend their entire lives, moment to moment, pursuing what is immediately pleasurable and avoiding what is immediately uncomfortable. Let's take for instance one that most modern day people are familiar with, smartphones. Have you noticed that whenever you have a moment to spare, you tend to take your phone out and mindlessly check your email, scroll through Instagram, or peek at how many likes your new photo received? Why do we do this? It's a perfect example of avoiding discomfort and pursuing what is immediately gratifying. Pay close attention to how you feel right before you take your phone out. It is likely some variation of discomfort, whether pain, anxiety, or even boredom. Then pay attention to what you feel after you start watching reels on Instagram. Suddenly, with a dose of dopamine in your brain, you feel engaged and the discomfort fades away, or at least you're distracted from it. Mindfulness is the remedy for this universal modern problem. When you practice mindfulness, you do not abruptly grab onto what is right in front of you. You simply pay attention to it, whether it's positive or negative. Imagine a movie screening at the theater. As a captivating movie plays, the audience is fully immersed in what is on the screen. They feel they are in the room of the scene. They truly feel they are shooting the gun or getting shot at right next to the protagonist. The next time you are at the theaters, try to momentarily bring your awareness to the fact that you are watching a movie. You realize you are staring at a big screen on which the projector is projecting images onto. You are no longer swayed or captivated by the content of the movie. This is the same process as mindfulness. The movie playing on the screen is the thoughts, emotions, and new problem that arises in your conscious experience. Mindfulness is simply observing the constantly changing play without attaching to its content. As you start mastering this skill, it becomes a superpower. But why? Imagine someone cuts you off on the road. This would normally ruin your day. You continue to ruminate on why that person is an asshole and simmer in your anger for the rest of the day. With the technique of mindfulness, you can simply attend to the feeling of anger in your body rather than repeatedly and obsessively ruminate on the thought that captures and angers you like a movie would. This is true freedom, a true superpower. Then, who exactly is the audience here? Who is the one that is observing your thoughts, your emotions, your experience? This is where the intimate connection between mindfulness and spirituality come in. Different religions around the world have tried to address this enigma for millennia. In Buddhism, the practice of mindfulness involves cultivating a detached and non-judgmental awareness of mental processes. Buddhists aim to develop insight into the impermanence and illusory nature of consciousness, recognizing that there is no permanent, unchanging self or soul that acts as an observer. That is the Anatman. Hinduism acknowledges the presence of an eternal and unchanging essence called the Atman, which is considered the true self or observer of consciousness. Through practices such as meditation and self-inquiry, Hindus seek to realize their identification with the Atman, transcending the illusion of individuality and connecting with the ultimate reality, Brahman. In Christianity, the observer of consciousness is often understood in terms of the soul or spirit. It is believed that individuals possess an immaterial and eternal soul that is created by God and serves as the essence of their being. Christians aim to cultivate a relationship with God through prayer and spiritual practices, seeking to align their consciousness with divine will and guidance. Throughout history, humans have used a deliberate practice of mindfulness to alter their state of consciousness. In Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, God says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. It has been widely believed across different religions and spiritual traditions 
that spiritual experience and therefore well-being can be found in the present moment. In a sense, most of human psychological suffering can be attributed to this inability to be mindful, or said another way, the blessing and curse of self-consciousness. Self-consciousness refers to our capacity to be aware of ourselves as separate individuals with thoughts, emotions, and a sense of personal identity. It is our capacity to step outside of ourselves, outside of our experience, and to think about the experience, to know that we are happy, to know that we are sad, not simply to be happy or sad. It is what makes us human. It's what defines us as humans. Self-consciousness has helped us in many ways. It's helped us to develop close relationships with each other, to create symbols, to plan for the future, to learn from our past, and ultimately to create technology and modern civilization that we enjoy comfortably. All this, however, came at a very high cost. When we are conscious of our experience and conscious of ourselves, conscious of the past and the future, how can we be sure we thought of every possible scenario that might be dangerous? How can we be sure that the horrible trauma is not going to happen again? How can we be sure that I'm good enough? As such, our mental health epidemic begins. Depression, anxiety, OCD, and other psychiatric illnesses come from this root problem. We've become more and more detached from reality as we become more accustomed to living in the world of symbols, of analyzing, of judging, and talking about our experience rather than simply living the experience. So how do we start to heal ourselves? Psychologist Ken Wilber talks about the pre-tragic, tragic, and post-tragic stages of spiritual development. In the pre-tragic stage, individuals are focused on personal desires and external validation, driven by egoic identification and acute self-consciousness. The tragic stage marks a significant shift as individuals confront suffering, loss, or existential crises leading to a deep questioning of life's meaning and the limitations of their previous worldview. This stage brings about a profound sense of existential angst because the burden of self-consciousness begins to weigh all too heavy. Finally, in the post-tragic stage, individuals achieve self-transcendence. They move beyond self-centeredness, cultivating compassion, interconnectedness, and acceptance of the inherent suffering of existence. The post-tragic stage involves a deep spiritual connection. So where do we start? Mindfulness. Begin to notice, non-judgmentally, the stream of your experience, thoughts, and emotions. Start to notice that the contents of consciousness do not define you, and notice that there is someone observing everything that is happening. And that's the magical journey from mindfulness to spirituality and the superpower and ultimate liberation that lie within this intersection. So why not embark on this journey yourself? If you found this exploration insightful and want to learn more, do consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps a lot and ensures you won't miss out on future enlightening content. Remember, the key to unlocking this superpower lies within you. So until our next time, stay mindful, stay connected, and continue to explore the wonders within you.